Okay, so there we are. There's the um, there's the intro video. Very excited to be um, collaborating in a partnership with the European Shatsu Congress um, next year uh, in Amsterdam. I was in Amsterdam last week, uh, just checking out the venues, meeting the team. It's absolutely great, and look at all the people tuning in. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so so much. Thank you so much, Jill, for um, coming online right from the middle of Spain. Can I'm seeing all these names coming up and I recognize some of the people there. Fantastic. Yeah, it's great. We had three, 300 people sign up for the webinar. So lots of you will be watching this as a recording at home. Um, so that will be like really cool. OK, so we've got some polls for you. We've got some uh, links and things as we go along as usual. Um, and uh, yeah, Bart here from the European Chapter Congress team. That's really cool. So let's go through the start to go through the slides. Okay, so this is Jill's presentation, um, and it's basically an introduction, isn't it, Jill, to what you'll be doing in Amsterdam next uh, next year when you're presenting? I've got very a bit too much jargon there in the in the title for the workshop, so uh, people are probably thinking, "What the hell is she going to do?" Yes, <laughs> but exactly. Yeah, happy to explain that. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so let's just have a look through. I thought we'd find out a little bit about everyone who's tuning in. So I've got a few polls for you. We're going to find out what status you're with, you're a practitioner or a teacher. We're going to find out where you are. And most probably most important of all, we're going to see whether you're planning to go and see us in Amsterdam next year. So let's um, find out who you are first. So let's just share this poll. Okay, look at that. We've got about 70% Shiatsu practitioners, um, around 11% of teachers even, and we've got 20% students, so quite a lot of students actually. So that's really interesting because I think that will be very interesting as we go on. Um, okay, so let's see if we are, can find out uh, where you are. Let's find out where you are. That's really interesting to see what kind of... So are you in Europe, in the Americas? Africa and Middle East, Asia, or Australasia and the Pacific? I oh, look, Joe, we've got 91% are in Europe, so you're all nearby to Amsterdam. You can all be there next year if you want to be, okay? We've got some people from America, some from Africa even, the Middle East, that's amazing, in Asia, but mostly from Europe, so that kind of makes sense. So now the last little question is whether you're planning to um, go to Amsterdam or not. Okay, so look at this. We've got 17% have actually bought the tickets. So there we are, Jill. Excellent. 15% um, they're definitely going, but they haven't bought the ticket. Well, you better, you should know, by the way, that the early bird is actually running out uh, at the end of this month. So we've got a link directly into the site, the European Chats with uh, Congress site for you later on. Um, not sure, 46%. So there we are. We'll have to see how we got on with these webinars and see if we can get you motivated to come and join us. Um, and then some people just can't make it. Well, that's okay, because actually we've got some on, a lot of online stuff and there's lots of stuff we can share with you. Okay, cool. So we found out a lot about, um, about the uh, audience. So I'm going to go back onto the chat. Oh, my goodness. Hi from Morocco. Look at this. Oh, that's Joyce. Yeah, she's from, she's from, from Holland. Okay, so let's move on then. Um, okay, so my question, the, when we were preparing this um, webinar, my question was really like, well, why? What is this all about? Um, what are meta, uh, meta skills? Um, so, and how do you bring them into your teaching? So what, what would you say to that? You've got uh, a quote there from Amy Mindell. And Amy yeah. Mitchell is from the, the world of, um, of process work, which is where I first heard the term meta, meta skills. Yeah. But I was already very interested in the idea beforehand. I just didn't have a name for it. And basically, right. it's, it's for me, it's, I don't only use them uh, in my Shiatsu practice. I also use them as a group facilitator. And, well, you use them. You use them. You have them. Meta skills are things we inherently have. And they become meta, they become more than skills when we bring our awareness into them. And it's, it's basically, it's a, connect, a direct connection to your belief system because it will demonstrate who you are. 
And I'll just give you a few examples of what we might call meta skills or, or typical things like empathy and, and uh, you know, just what makes you a little bit different uh, as a practitioner, what makes you, Cliff, different from me. Um, because we have the same ability, we've learned the same, the same technique. Yeah, that's great. So I think probably it's a good time to ask. I'm going to put, I've got one more poll up my sleeve, as it were. Um, and I just think, just like to ask everyone how much before this webinar, before obviously Jill's explained it a bit, but before this webinar, did you, how, what was your knowledge or how much did you know about meta skills? So let's find out. Okay, we've got 3% of people consider themselves expert in meta skills. So that's. Put, <laughs> <laughs> and 16%. So we've got about 20% of people who know about them or think they're experts, um, but we've got a very big majority of people that are not sure or they don't know anything about it. So let's see if we can, in the next uh, 50 minutes, we can uh, really explore that. Okay, so here's an overview of the webinar that we've put together for you. We're going to discuss understanding meta skills and how we can bring these into our shiatsu. So we're going to try and make it as practical as we can. Um, and then we're comparing meta skills with learned skills. We've got a practical exercise, haven't we, Jill, that you've put together. So yeah. you need a pen and paper ready later on in the webinar. Um, and then Jill's going to give an overview of the workshop um, in uh, September next year and hopefully tempt you, those of you who haven't bought your tickets, to get that early bird price and buy a ticket and you can meet up with us. OK, so cool. Let's have a look. Right. Okay, so what would you say about this slide? So let's start first of all with a skill that would be a learned ability that you've learned in your training or in a, a workshop. And the, a meta skill is referring to a skill that you inherently have. It's something that is, is part of your way of being, it's part of your nature. And the idea of making it meta is that you would become much more aware of that, you would develop it more. Uh, and so that when you're working, with this awareness, with this um, almost uh, um, magnifying this ability, uh, the idea is that you would also connect much more naturally with your client. You would bring out your client's nature a lot more. And this would more than probably make your session much more efficient, as uh, as it were. And, and what got me really into this was, uh, you know, years ago when I was in the, the committee of the Shiatsu Association, I, I was, uh, we were, I was also translating and we were bringing people from Northern Europe over to, to do courses. And I kept meeting people who were repeating courses and getting feedback from them. And they were saying things like, you know, well, I haven't really practiced what we learned last year. And, uh, I haven't really brought it into my work and, and I was asking myself what what's happening here you know why why are people not engaging with this why are they not bringing it into their everyday routine right yes how are they not placing them in the practice that you know it's in the knowledge it's in the mind but it's not in the body as it were yes. and um and, uh, uh you know I was I was thinking, how can how can we bring this in into the teaching? Because I was starting to teach in that point, and I've always been a teacher. I used to be a language teacher before I got into shiatsu, and I was a teacher trainer. So, so I was thinking, how you know, as a teacher trainer, what did I do? And I was very much a mentor type trainer. But it's not just what I can give you, but what you're bringing into this, and what you can give me to work. Yes. With. You know what I mean. You're, you're a teacher. You know all about this. So. Yeah, it's more. It's more of a process-based approach, isn't it? It's more of a student-centered approach, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's. I mean, uh, there's another little slide there, and um, and if we think about it, you know, what what makes us good at shiatsu? Why are some? Yes. And also not just what makes us good, or or what makes us do the shiatsu we do, but sometimes we have a a session that's just really effective. And I think most people's aim is to try and get more of those effective sessions or more of those sessions that make you just think, what a day, you know, what, oh, yes. I love this work, you know. So yes. a lot of people, so a lot of people might, might say, oh, but you've got magic hands. There's something there that's just magic. You see a teacher and you think, oh, this person's just got so much experience so much practice it's normal that every time they do a shiatsu it's just fantastic 
And then sometimes you go to a workshop, you learn a technique, and you go, oh, if I could do that technique like that, then my shiatsu would be fantastic. But yeah. I, I think really what makes our shiatsu much more effective is, is to be able to be authentically ourselves. Yes. Yeah. And, and that is where the meta skills come in. It's, you know, if I can become aware of exactly who I am, if I can become aware of what makes me special, because yes. we're all special, then, then basically I, I hopefully can connect better with my clients. I can, uh, I can connect better with, with shiatsu. For me, it's the difference between shiatsu, the technique, and the art of shiatsu. Yes, and, yes. And, you know, if you can, I, I, I'm also, uh, my, my favorite style of shiatsu is seiki. Yes. With Paul Lumber, your colleague. Of course, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, the, Kishi's big thing was uh, to be authentically yourself and, and your treatment to find the authenticity of the person, you know, to connect where the meta skills come in. Right, yes. I mean, I, when I, we were preparing this and I was thinking, looking through these slides, I just thought that really does trigger off so many different questions, doesn't it? Why do some is more effective than others? Because, I mean, there is a, a lot of interaction going. I mean, I've always considered that, that you, you've got, you've got, um, you've got a variety of different things. You've got the modality itself has certain qualities, you know. Mm -hmm. The practitioner themselves have qualities that they bring, like you say, their own meta skills and their own techniques. But you've also got the client as well. So you've got the client, the client's needs. So obviously their needs might align more with the modality as well. So you've got those kind of things as well. And I, I always just think that my own feeling when I'm working here, and this is my shatsu room, by the way, right back here, right where I work. <laughs> um, I always, when I'm in, when I'm in here, oh, that's yours, is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I always think that it's almost like a kind of karmic event when someone comes for a shiatsu, especially for the first treatment, because there's a whole, there's a whole universe out there. What has brought those, those things in alignment? You know, that modality, that person, that practitioner, and when you think about the practitioner, you think about them also channeling all that prior knowledge that's been accumulated over all of those thousands of years. I mean, it's a really quite a powerful event. And like you say, when it does all completely mesh, it's almost like a miracle in a way. It's like, a, it's a, such a, a powerful place to be, isn't it? And I, And the more I thought about it as well, I just thought, well, it's so easy to think about it in terms of technique, oh, I'm doing this, I'm pressing this point, I'm doing this, that, and the other. But actually, what you're talking about is you're talking about an energetic connection, aren't you? It's a resonant connection between two people. And so the power of that is so much to do, like you say, with the authenticity of that touch and that connection that the person's making. Um, and I just thought it was really interesting, that... that uh, that thing. And also, when, I, when I think back as well, when I was like being apprenticed by pulling back in the mists of time, I was very, very in, inexperienced. Um, and I started treating some of her clients. I just realized that actually it's such an individual thing, because even at that stage, there were certain clients that I resonated with. Mm. And even though I was so inexperienced, and that made me really think, well, what is really going on here? It's not really to do with having hundreds of, you know, or decades of experience or special training or anything. It's more to do with that interaction, that authenticity, as you said, of the interaction between those two people. I, I think it's more, for me, it's the, it, when I start talking about authenticity, it's, uh, it's also the spiritual experience. Yes. It takes it up a level. And, and yeah. the great thing for me about Shiatsu is it's very physical. You know, one of my meta skills is being able to expand out and have a big, strong spiritual connection. And yes. the, being in my body has never been an easy thing. So, so shiatsu is my modality. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's and being able to trust in that because um, I don't know about yourself, Cliff. I was brought up in a in a Scottish mining village when I, I I wasn't taken to church as a child. I wasn't there was no spirituality in my lifestyle. And, no. Uh, any any religion that was around me was actually. Uh, was a contentious thing it was a difficult thing and yes. um, and so for me to, to to be able to trust in that I, that has been my pathway has been able to really matter the things that i uh, i can really connect to and and my own abilities 
and not just say, hey, let's all go out there and connect to the universe. I've never been able to go that way. You know? No, <laughs> exactly. You've got to put in common. Yeah. Strong spiritual connection in my shiatsu. So, yes. so yeah, meta skills for me have been a bit of a pathway into that. And I Brilliant. think also within that trust thing and, and listening to you talking about your experience working with Pauline, you know, as being an apprentice to someone as great as Pauline, as Pauline was, you know, yeah. it, 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 you have to have a lot of confidence. And, and this is something I find sorely lacking in a lot of the uh, Shiatsu students and, and recent graduates. You know, they, they don't feel confident. They, they, it's like there's always someone who's better than them. Well, I'll tell you what, I wasn't confident at all when I was there. <laughs> I was the first, when she asked me to work on her, right, the first first time I was working on her, first of all, I just kept putting it off. Oh, no, I've still got jet lag. I can't, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I was like totally, no, I was totally freaked out. And it, and it, but it was only through doing it that, you know, you're just doing it is the thing. You just have to do it, get feedback and just continue doing it, don't you? And that's confidence comes through repetition, I think. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a look at this slide. This is an interesting one, isn't it? It gives more of an overview of um, it gives more of an overview of all the different types of um, meta skills. Have you got anything to say about some of these? Well, those these, are just um, some examples. So, so these are some classic examples, uh, and everyone already would talk about empathy when they're talking about shiatsu. They talk about their listening skills, uh, and you know, some people might talk about detachment. Some people might not be too happy with that, but you've got things there like fishing. Fishing is a, a term that they use for, you know, not telling people what's wrong with them, but trying to get people to tell you without asking them direct questions. So fishing for information. Oh, I see. I wondered what that was. I wonder whether it was literally fishing. I thought, you've got to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And of course, beginner's mind is very popular at the moment. You know, it's, it's being able to go back to the to that. And, and keeping your, your ego down, you know, just staying in the Yes, position. exactly, yeah, yeah. So so those are just a few examples, and I was thinking, you know, maybe with those examples, I was just thinking maybe some, maybe since we've got the chat clip, maybe some people have, with that. Post well, that's a point, yeah. Did anyone on the chat, anyone on the chat like to contribute any other meta skills that they feel they have or they'd like to have <laughs> to add to that list? I'm just, just think, um, Open heart, says Monica. Oh, that's a good one. That's it's an excellent one, isn't it? Yeah, trust, trust says Biggie. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, just those two meta skills will get you a long way. <laughs> Holding space, that's one Holding of Holding space, excellent, yeah. Oh, that, that's a new one. I've never heard that. Ability to hold multiple... To hold multiple perspectives. I think that's an excellent one, actually. Thank you for that, Courtney, because, um, yeah, I think that's very important, especially when you get someone, for example, a client who's a Brexit supporter or who likes, <laughs> this is a UK thing, or who, you know, a box in Spain. Who thinks Boris Johnson is the best person ever. You know, you have to keep a Zen like calm and see multiple perspectives and transcend your own limited view of there's, the world. <laughs> there's one there from Annette that's clean language, and, and that's going to be an example of something when I talk just now about the difference between, so, so it's good that you brought that up, Annette. Because yes. the, the difference between what is a meta skill and what is a skill, and clean language, uh, which I I imagine most people found out about from Nick, Paul, clean language is a technique, clean language is a skill. Um, yeah. That that is the difference between meta skills and skills. So for me, uh, the the other side of that, the meta skill of clean language would be your listening skills. That's it. I think we've got a slide coming up for that, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. But it's good that that's come up there. So. Yeah, no yeah, expectations. Is well. I, think that's a, I think that's a good. We've got you. You could do another. We could do another slideshow with all of these. They're amazing. No expectations is a great one. Absolutely. Open mind, thankfulness. I think that's a great one. Open awareness, attunement, that's giving that. by being happy. That's great. That's great. I'm just yeah, that's great. Uh, Nicoletta said attunement, and I'm just thinking alignment. Alignment is that a technique? Is it a meta skill? Is it a skill or a meta skill? That, that's yeah, I don't know. Let's have a look at the next slide. I think that's the one that's, yeah, this is, here we are. This is the yeah, slide. Kind of where we're going. I, I just want to mention one more thing. And I said, I okay. said already that, that me, well, we don't need the slide especially, but meta skills yeah. are something that we already have and we probably develop in our, uh, in our everyday life, in our, 
Uh, I have 2,500 square metres of garden here behind this house. Uh, <laughs> and I can, today I spent three hours weeding, uh, trying to get in a good state of mind to do this work, to do this webinar. And the amount of attention you need to weed when you've got small plants, weeding for people who don't speak such good English is taking out the, the plants. And the attention you need, the concentration you need, it's so useful for me in Shiatsu. Right, okay, there we are. So that's an example of something I bring in. Oh, we're, getting, we're still getting more here. We're going to have to write a book on this when we finish. So so we can go on to the next slide now because that, that's kind of, I okay. felt like. Great, yeah, sure. Yeah. We've got loads more, loads more meta skills, by the way. Compassion, being wow. generous. Daniela says wildness, which I think is something that's very interesting there. And Yeah, Daniela's a sneaky colleague. Yeah, I, I totally get that. <laughs> okay let's go on to the next slide and see what we've got on this one this i thought this was very interesting by the way it's an, it's it's um contrasting isn't it the yeah. meta skill with the skill the ability of listening i mean i developed my listening skills working in a bar when i was at university um, and yeah. <laughs> we all develop our listening skills in different ways but the the skill of clean language was a very much a learned skill it was something yeah. I had to study it was something i had to practice and I, I do use clean language. And, and now it's almost like a meta skill. It's in my everyday. Um, yeah. It does take a lot of practice, though, doesn't it? It does. It's not something that just comes like that. It's so simple, though. It, it's, it looks so simple. It's like one of these Zen things. It looks so simple. And yet, when you try to do it, especially at the beginning, you just think, oh, my goodness, it's so hard. It's so hard to keep it completely clear. But the rewards come because... It's an absolutely awesome technique. I mean, I love, I love it. I think Nick is brilliant, and I've done lots of work with him in the past. I think it's, it's great, and I, I use it all the time in my shiatsu now. I think it's absolutely brilliant, but it does take quite a bit more practice than you think in the beginning. Well, I, uh, I translated for Nick a couple of times, and I translated about 12 years ago, and then I think it was last year he came over to Granada and... Uh, and I was uh, speaking to some people who had been on the first course and they said, you know, I think I came back because I didn't really get it the first time. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, I said to them, it's so important to practice this. And at the end of the course, I was chatting to a few people. I said, you know, I, I, I'll practice this when people call me up to offer me a, um, a mobile phone or something like that. You know, these, these uh, tele operators and, and I'll practice my clean language in those situations or when I go down the market, I'll start asking really convoluted questions to to the people in the market. I find I do slip it into normal conversation now. I do. I can't help myself. But don't... Yeah, what kind of whatever is exactly is that? Or yeah. <laughs> It really works. It's really brilliant. Yeah. I've, I've written another meta skill here is sensitivity. And I would say the skill is resonance, you know, in a way that yes. resonance happens, but also we. So sensitivity is, uh, is another meta skill. It's something you, you bring with you into Shiatsu. Well, resonance, well, it's not quite so clear, but resonance is, a, is something you can be taught. I mean, we have things we do in shiatsu classes to to show people what we mean by resonance and resonance happens but but we can bring it about people can learn to to feel that resonance to make that resonance a bigger experience on the whole to magnify their own resonance but the sensitivity if you know you you can develop that but you have to have something there in in the beginning um, and then joint rotation, that's that's a, a classic technique. And I'm just saying we, we can add lots of things into that. And one of them might be curiosity. We might come with an innate uh, feeling of curiosity. And for example, David Ventura, who's going to come on the, in the European Shiatsu Congress. I mean, if you see David working with joint rotations, they're amazing. You know, the, he's so fluid. He's so... Uh, so connected to the person and and that gives you so much more in your session and sometimes you know you get people doing joint rotations and it's just completely mechanical but if you add a bit of creativity in there that can completely change the experience Improvisation, says nick yeah improvisation yeah that's yeah that would be that's another another thing isn't it just in fact sometimes do you know what i if i feel i'm getting into a rut with my shiatsu, you know, I have this little test that I, little um, 
test that I give myself, which is I do the hard diagnosis and then I set myself this task. I can do anything I like as long as it's not the first thing that I would just normally do. <laughs> so I just forced that. I forced the improvisation thing and the curiosity onto myself. Like, okay, like what? If well, that's an example of developing a meta skill. That's kind of what I'm talking about. And, um, you know, it's it's difficult to to bring things you already know into shiatsu, but uh, sometimes you have to force yourself. Sometimes you have to really, uh, really create an artificial situation. I'll talk about that a bit more when we talk about how I'm going to focus the workshop and uh, I'll... I'll uh, you know I, what I use in the workshop is is the peer support learning community. Get other people involved to try to help you see what uh, what your skills are to help you take them to that place of development. Communities, yeah. So, what about this other one? This uh, clarity one, clarity and the focus. Well, I can't actually see. This is clarity of it is it is a, Clarity and then focus attention is the skill. Ah, so clarity of vision. Yeah, clarity of vision. There's some people just they, they can see so so much in the energy field. They they just look at someone, they can see things happening. I mean you've got you've got people like Nicola, Nicola Lee, your colleague, uh, who I've worked with many times and uh, she's a good friend of mine and she she just sees so much. Uh, I, I'm in awe of her when she's working. But I don't have that, you know, but I can develop techniques. I can develop my focus. I can soften my focus. I can use peripheral vision. Uh, I can um, connect into my spine. I can improve my alignment and I can get a real feeling for people's energy field. Oh, I mean, I, I, um, I use it like a synesthetic techniques when I'm teaching that. So, you know, some people have different senses that they dominate in so when they're sensing energy so you can actually develop like exercises that get people to use different senses synesthetically you know what I mean so you can you could say look at the energy field and then you can say well I don't see anything I just see someone's jumper or something <laughs> you know their clothes or something like that and then but then you could take them to a different sense by saying okay well you could do it either like um, through touch, like imagine if you touched that those two areas, would they feel different? You know, they go, well, they would do. Well, how do you know that? You know, and that reminds me. Or you could do, okay, if you had turned another one, I love doing is like, okay, this quality on the hara and this quality. If you had to turn that into a sound, what sort of sound would it be? And they'll come up with some kind of sound. You know, because it it vision. So you can... yeah, that's right. Yeah, it bypasses the it bypasses the contractive aspect of feeling you can't do it oh i can't see any energy i can just see them i can't see anything and they go well you know okay if you had to turn this into a sound and then they come up with a sound or a color or something you see what i mean so yeah that's the thing about being in that role and being able to see so many of the of of uh people like yourself working you know the the privilege of being a translator is uh you can pick up on how people are focusing and how people are learning teaching these techniques and and developing proprioceptivity however if you look at it from the point of view of developing a meta skill you've got people who have just got for example in this this particular topic who have got so much ability and proprioceptive ability and it can they can pick up so much information that can become co completely overwhelming and uh, so the great thing about honing in on the meta skill, about um, refining a meta skill, is you can you can support them to actually uh, use that ability, not be overwhelmed by it, and then focus their attention on what is useful and what they can develop in their shiatsu. I think we've all had that. We've all had uh, students that have brought all kinds of different things in and. Uh... One of the favourite things we, that we do in class here, which I really like doing, is that we do we, when we teach the elements, we get everyone to bring something in that they associate with the fire element or whatever. And then we and what we do is we put a big mat out on the like a big chart out on the on the floor with all the five element categories, and we see if we can bring enough objects in from the outside. 
And when people bring an object from the outside, they often tell a story about it, which can be quite amazing. Like we actually had one guy who was a charcoal burner. This was a fire element. He actually did charcoal burning. He brought some charcoal in, you know, and the whole story of that transformation, he had such an amazing connection with it that it just, it was just so much better than doing a teacher led thing, you know, than just going up there on the whiteboard and going, Fire element is associated with the color red. <laughs> and that's like drawing all those meta skills in, isn't it? And just creating this sort of amazing connection between people. Um, yeah, talking about that, I'm just thinking of the, you know, the focus, getting back to the focus on the workshop itself is uh, that there are two aspects to what, what we were talking about earlier, the learning community and how to bring your colleagues in to support you in this this self-discovery and this discovery of these skills that you can then convert into meta skills is uh, you will often not see your real uh, your real abilities you'll often not see your qualities because you have them they're so integrated in you and and the great thing about working with the community and working with the group as a whole uh, is that other people can see these, they can highlight them and they can tell you what they really, what they, um, what they magnify in your shiatsu or how they help you engage in your shiatsu. And, and this for me is, is such an important aspect of, of developing this kind of work is, uh, is the, the side, the empowerment side, you know, how, uh, how if you, you can be aware of your own ability, you can be aware of your own capabilities, then you can make them grow. And it's the the support of your colleagues, which is in the end is what we do in Shiatsu. We support our client in this situation. So why not have your fellow students support you in this situation? Great. I, um, right. Oh, look, we've got 20 minutes to run and it's time to do the meditation. So, that's probably a good time to do it, isn't it? So if you'd like to just, you're going to lead us through it and then we'll uh, write down our experience and then we'll, and then we'll share the results on the chat. So I'd, I'd like to invite you to disconnect from the, the computers for a few minutes and Maybe you want to even sit down, lie down, find a comfortable position. Take some time to align, align your spine. Connect into the body. And just connect to the breath, just especially the out breath. Just take some time to breathe out. Waiting for the in breath, giving it space. And just take a few moments to feel yourself in your body. Breathing, being comfortable. I think I'd like you to invite you to. Take a walk to your your practice room, a place where you normally do shiatsu. And just look for the keys in your pocket. Open the door. Go in and you're going to be receiving a client in a few minutes. So just check the, the room. Maybe you want to create an ambience. Put on some incense, maybe burn some oils. What kind of smells are in the room? What kind of lighting do you have? The subtle lighting maybe. Maybe the sun's coming in through the window. Just be aware of, of the surroundings, be aware of the sounds. If you put on some background music, if the maybe like me, you have the, the sounds of the birds in the garden accompanying your shiatsu. And there's a knock on the door, so open the door and, and it's one of your usual clients, someone you have a good connection with. So just receive your client in, 
greet them, say hello. Just have your normal conversation with them. And I want you to imagine inviting them to go to where you work. Maybe it's a futon, a massage table. Ask them to accommodate themselves in the place where you work. And I want you to go next to them. Just connect with how you feel. Connect with how your breathing is. Just checking your alignment on your spine and getting ready to go into the shiatsu and just thinking, what? What am I feeling? How am I looking at yourself? More than your client, maybe looking at yourself, how, you, how you're feeling. What? What is this session like? What are you like in this session? And I want you to imagine your shiatsu with this client. Maybe it's a shiatsu you've already experienced with a particularly good connection. If not, just imagine a shiatsu with a really good connection. You're very confident. You trust well what you're doing. Your hands connect to the right places, they do the right things. And just, again, bring your awareness into your body, awareness into yourself, and try to find what special skill, what special ability you have that is somehow facilitating, enabling this special connection, this connection that just let something happen. Give space for something interesting, something satisfying to happen. Take your time to finish up the session, come back into yourself, come back to your breath. And as you breathe in, just checking what what ability is most present in you at this moment. What special thing that makes you unique in your shiatsu is really present in this moment. Giving your clients some time to come round. Maybe you get some feedback from your client. Maybe they tell you how the session was for them. Just imagine, connect into that that space, that, that moment. And then you say goodbye to your client, close the door behind them. You stand in your practice again, you take a look around, feel yourself. How do you feel? How was it different when you were with your client to how it is when you're alone? What What is that thing that brings the two of you together, that makes the key between you dance. And so you you maybe have to snuff out a few candles, you turn off the light, you go out the door of your practice and then you walk off. And just taking a few seconds to come back into yourself, come out of the imagination, breathing out, coming back into your surroundings and just when you finish up, when you come back into yourself, just get that pen and paper that that Cliff mentioned earlier that you have on hand. And I'd like you to to invite you to write down whatever was that ability, whatever was that special moment. 
that special thing that made that shiatsu really connect. All right, maybe there's one, maybe there's a few. And also, I'd like you just to take a few minutes and maybe think back to some some session, some perfect session. Or some really good session. No, not perfect. Really good session where something clicked, where something special happened. And something in you enabled that, some ability in you. So maybe think back to that session and think, what what was it? What was the, the thing that created the magic that we've been talking about earlier? And write that down too. Remember that. Be aware of that. Connection from heart to heart, expanded awareness. People have connected. Yeah, it's a very strong, obviously a very strong exercise. Now, we've only got 10 minutes left. It always goes so quickly this hour. Um, A special space where trust and respect for life is alive. There we are. Um, We are in here. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So we've got a few, uh, just a few slides to finish up, haven't we? These are actually slides from workshops that you've given or that you've been involved in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, but I just want to say... Yeah, go on. I've got some beef. Well, I'd like to say something about that. I've got some beef with intuition. You know, I I, um, I have a very strong intuition. Uh, that was something that was brought up when I started Shiatsu, and, and that was always pointed out in the group. And and uh, it, it was one of those things where, oh, yeah, Jill can do that because she's got intuition, so she's special. And quite honestly, I don't think intuition is something we have. I think it's just a sum of all the the meta skills that we have developed or sum of all the skills that we naturally have. So I get quite angry when people make it almost mystical. And and I think everyone, if they develop their meta skills, they can have this so-called intuition. It's been very interesting when we did the scientific basis course recently and we had Cindy Engel, I really, bet, I really brings her to mind. You know, scientists working on that whole area of somatic empathy and things like that. It just, it just isn't. In, as far as I'm concerned, intuition is just abilities that have not been categorised properly. That's how I define it. <laughs> yes, we'll definitely be doing shiatsu, and uh, I don't know how many people will show up for this, but I'm hoping that it'll give us the opportunity with quite a, a good number of people for the participants to find someone who share meta skills or who share skills and then they can support each other to develop those meta skills in in a practice session and see how other people fo- uh, focus on their work. It's going to give us a lot of opportunities. It's going to be awesome. I've been involved in the European Shatsa Congress myself personally since way back in the midst of time when it started in Kiental and it's always been, I've been to every single one, it's been absolutely unmissable and last year when uh, last time two years ago it's in Vienna it just went mega and it's going to be even more amazing I think in Amsterdam there's an absolute I've met two of the team now and they are absolutely top class organizers they're awesome and it's you know just going to be amazing so um, I really recommend that you that you do um that you do do that (laughs) Um, so there's the link if you just like to link it and if you don't get that link right now i'll email it to you you've got till the end of the month to sign up before um the early bird finishes up so um there it's that's what you'll see when you go to the um the link okay you'll see that uh, that image and now it's time for me to plug the next webinar we're going to be doing a webinar every single month now up until the summer of next year it's going to be on the second tuesday of every month And we've got Joyce um, from Holland uh, doing the next one. That's in December, December the 10th. Uh, We haven't released the link yet, but I'll sort that out tomorrow and I'll email that to you so you can be the first to sign up for the next uh, next webinar. Um, So I guess really we've got just one minute left and I just want to say thank you so much, Jill. It's been so much fun. I'm glad that your connection still worked right from the middle of the <laughs> middle of nowhere. Um, thank you very much for your interest and check out the 
European Shiatsu Congress website for um, information on upcoming webinars. Watch out on Facebook. And if you can't find it, you can always go to newenergywork.com. We've got a special page with all the links and we'll put all the recordings up there too uh, as a resource. So there we go. Okay, time to end the webinar. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>